Hey, I'm Leland Cratcher, flight lead of the Next Gen Eagles. These are my Christian Eagles, and we're excited to fly today. The Christian Eagle is a sporty biplane fully capable of aerobatics that made its debut in 1977. Their eye-catching colors have been a popular sight in air shows until hiatus started a decade ago. Today, the Next Gen Eagle team is performing around the country to restore glory to this amazing aircraft. We have lead pilot Leland here to tell us more about the Kristen Eagles. So what got me into flying was, uh, I've kind of been around it my whole life actually. Uh, my family told me I've been looking up at airplanes since before I knew what they were. Um, and my grandfather was very air show obsessed, so I got to go to air shows before I can remember. There's pictures of me on his shoulders, uh, out in Louisiana going to air shows. So I kind of always knew I wanted to do this. And as soon as I learned what a Christian Eagle was, I was sold. I knew that this is what I wanted to do. Um, and uh, learning about the Eagles aerobatic team, and then having the opportunity in my late teenage years to fly with the, or to not fly with, but travel with the Iron Eagle aerobatic team, wiping smoke oil down and learning about the air show industry. Uh, there was never a question that the Eagles are what I wanted to fly in air shows. And as much fun as solo aerobatics is, there's a grace and beauty to formation aerobatics that is just unlike anything else in this world. So getting to do that now and fly this two-ship team of Eagles around the country in air shows has just been incredible. Uh, it's taken a lot of training and time to get here, but it's been worth every second. So uh, the Christian Eagle is a powered by an IO360 like homing. Uh, it's fabric wings uh, and metal on the fuselage here. Uh, but mostly just a tube and fabric airplane for the most part. Uh, it was built in the 70s by Frank Christensen. He worked uh, with Curtis Pitts uh, working on that biplane and had some ideas of how he could expand it and make it a little bit more comfortable. Um, the Eagle has a little bit wider. Uh, it's a little wider. The canopy comes down a little lower. So there's just a few more creature comforts in it than with the Pitts. But these two specific airplanes are a little bit improved or, or in a, upgraded or from a normal Christian Eagle. Uh, we have Lycon built uh, IO360s with 10 to 1 compression, cold air induction. Uh, Tom in, the, in our Eagle 2 has a ram air intake as well for a couple extra inches of manifold pressure. So we're making close to 250 horsepower out of the four cylinders. So we get a little more performance out of these uh, and are trying to push into all the new modern carbon fiber modifications and things to get as lightweight as possible with as much power as possible out of our light homing and parts of uh, combination here. Um, the other than that, though, the airplanes are pretty stock. They roll the same as normal Christian Eagles um, and cowies are the same, canopies are the same. So for the most part, what you see is what you'd see on any Eagle. Uh, we just have a couple more horsepower hiding underneath these all. Uh, yeah, so I've been flying air shows for, this will be my third season now, uh, second season in the Eagle. And this is our first season together as a team flying the shows. Uh, let's see, this is April now. We've flown three shows so far this year. We have one coming up uh, April 13th and 14th, actually here at our hometown show at Fort Worth at uh, JRB Fort Worth, which is really cool. Uh, really excited to fly that show. Um, and we're going to have some of our sponsors out there, Cornerstone Staffing sponsoring the show. They're one of our sponsors. Uh, Flying Eyes, Tempest, iFly EFB, Lycoming, Lycon, mention them, uh, Hooker Harness, uh, Softy Parachutes keeping us all in there. Um, without them, we really couldn't be flying the shows that you see us doing. Uh, so they've all been great to us, helping us fly across the country, staying safe uh, and staying uh, as equipped as we need. Our air show is a mix of lots of smoke and beautiful colors out of these airplanes. So we're up there showing smooth, dynamic, flowing formation aerobatics. Uh, and kind of putting on a show that hopefully fills a niche that people haven't seen before while paying homage to the teams before us with the Eagles and Iron Eagles. Um, and uh, yeah, basically it's my dream come true flying these shows, uh, especially with a form in a formation act. So getting to fly it around with all these wonderful sponsors has just been a dream come true for me. There you go. Helicopter coming in, we're flowing 3 2 if it works for you. Alright, Roger, if that'll work, uh, we'll make a left downwind for 3 2. Alright, so would you run it up in this airplane? Pretty normal, just 360 stuff. So you're going to go to like 1800, 
Check everything. What? Take your traffic, Eagle Fighter 3 is taking runway 32. We're making a left turn to the west and we'll uh, follow Fox Whiskey out. Alright, so basically we don't take off in formation here because the narrow's too or the runway's too narrow. Okay. But you'll see him over your right here you shoulder here. That he'll come up to me. He'll give me a thumbs up and then three calls threes on and he's not really on right now, but he is enough because there's not enough room. Okay. So we run it up. Hey, Chad, so far, Three's off. And Hicks traffic, helicopter 3, Julia Bravo, short final, 3 2, be a low approach, and we'll be making a right traffic. Hicks. Appreciate you, Julia Bravo. Yep, no problem. I'm also Julia Bravo, so, Bravo Brothers. Hey, looky there. All right, Eagle Flight is in the left crosswind departure to the west. Eagle Flight, push. Two, three. Yo. All right, I'm going to bring the prop back, and you guys are cleared in. Two, three. Have you done much formation flying? No, I have not. This cool. is pretty new for me. Yeah, so we uh, we fly together a lot. That's uh -huh. where Tom parks. So that's where he does formation aerobatics, is that close. Okay. Um, and so we fly, the three of us fly together a lot. Miles is with us a ton. Uh -huh. um, so we have our standard briefings of things. Right. Uh, which is, you know, basically we have, we know where we're going, how we're departing, and all the flow and calls and everything that we need. So whenever I tell them to push, it's a pre-briefed uh, frequency that we push to. Okay. And then they check in with me, two, three, to let me know as the lead that they're here and that they're, they can hear me if anything happens. Okay. So yeah. if, I, if I would have pushed frequencies and I would have only heard two, right. then I would have waited. And if I hadn't heard three, I would have called for Miles and said, hey, can you hear me or are you up? And if he doesn't reply, then it's my job to go back to the other frequency and find him and get him to come to the frequency with us. Okay. Uh, same thing if two didn't answer as a wingman. Three's up. So he's on our left now. Uh, so as a wingman, he'll, uh, if say, say Miles was pushed, but Tom didn't, he would have given Tom a second to say two, but then if he didn't hear anything, he would have said three, which lets me know that he's up, and then I'm waiting on Tom to check in. Okay. So it's just standard, some of the standard things. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to give Miles a signal uh, to take the lead, and okay. then he'll take the lead, and then we'll be flying off of him. Okay. All right, so he just told me he has the lead. All right, I gave Miles the lead, so we'll be flying in under him here. Power's coming back so he can overtake. Alright, power's coming back up. Right there. Go. Cool. Alright, we're gonna do a right turn. Ready? Yeah, sure. crazy seeing it up close, you can really see all the movements. Oh yeah. Well, one out. Well, out of the Bravo, climb us up, it's bumping down here. Got me climbing. So flying formation in a biplane is interesting because you have to avoid the top wing. So there's a lot of head movement and stuff I'm doing. Go ahead and fall like five inches. Um, and uh, yeah, so you're flying formation, but you're also like moving around the wing. Uh -huh. And so a lot of it's trusting who you're flying off of. But then whenever you fly as close as Tom flies to me, he can see everything I'm doing. Right. Um, he can see what I'm thinking. So if I do little hand motions to him, uh -huh. I can see it. Bring it up. Let me know when you want me to draw back. We'll do. I'm going to get a, a little more trail here. All right, and go ahead and take spacing. All right, switchblade. Ready, break. 
and uh, RV takes spacing as you need. We'll be playing in this area at uh, roughly 4,500. Roger, RV's going west 4,000. West 4,000, Roger. All right, so in formation flying, oh, no. uh, you kind of want to talk through everything you're doing, right? Uh -huh. That's what you heard a lot of us doing. Right. But with Tom and I, he knows how I fly, because we've right. flown so much together. We've flown for three years, a couple hundred hours together in formation. Um, so he sticks on my wing pretty well. Uh -huh. And so the job of a lead pilot is to be smooth, predictable, and consistent. Because if I'm smooth, predictable, and consistent, then that allows him a smooth, predictable, consistent profile to be able to match off of. If he can't expect me and, and predict what I'm going to be doing, then he'll never be able to stay in position, right? That's so right. that's my job. So I'll show you a little bit of that, and then we'll get a little more dynamic with the maneuvering, uh -huh. and then we'll end it with the loop, all right? Okay, cool. Sounds good. Let's go ahead and bring the pops up. So if you look to your right, you'll see him in there nice and tight. Right. My job is to find lines for us to fly. This is where it gets fun. Now we're going to the inside for him. Uh, Miles is doing aerobatics, that's funny. He has a smoke going over there. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so now uh, on the outside turn like we just did, uh -huh. he is, uh, the geometry is working against him, right? He is on the outside of a turn, underpowered, trying to stay in, so I have to modulate my power a little bit. But now he's on the inside. So I can keep my power up because he now has the shorter ankle. Right. So he's able to stay in a little easier. Right. So he's working much harder on this one than he is on the inside one. On the inside, when he's still working hard, he's got to hold his position, but he has the power advantage where right now he does not. So right. if I didn't pull power about right here, then he would stand no chance because I'd start running away from him and he'd never be able to catch me. Right. But then once we start rolling downhill together, I can bring the power back in. Yeah, that makes sense. So it's just steep turns taken to another level, basically. All right, let's see. How are you feeling? I'm good. good. Yeah, okay, I'm cool. totally good. All right, let's do a, let's see. We're going to do a right turn, take like right to left wing over, get some speed, and then we'll dive into the loop. Coming right. All right, so when we when we pull for the loop, I'm just going to get you to hold your headset. Because I was going to say, pull yeah. G's. Yep. I was going to say, just let me know when I need to hold on. Yep, it's <laughs> going to be three to four G's, realistically. All right. Perfect. All right, dive it in. Rolling out. We're aiming for our speed here, then I'm going to pull the loop. Smoke on. There's one seventy. All right, loop ready to go. You want to try a barrel roll with it? I was just thinking that. That's what I think too. Alright, cool. Focus on. Roll, ready, go. So the point of a barrel roll is you want to be 90 degrees. Uh, whenever you're inverted, you want to be 90 degrees off the point. Okay. That's what I'm aiming for. Here comes the G. Ah. Hold up. Very cool. I love it. That is awesome. Hell yeah. <laughs> Are you familiar with the hammerhead? You know what that is? Yes, and I'm fine with it. Yeah. Right, cool. Focus on. Hammer ready to go. Alright, little right runner right on the vertical, pointed straight up, waiting for it to stall. Kick now. And look to your left. Coming right. Pull it. Pull down. All right, uh, RV, where you at? Uh, you're nine o'clock. Nice. All right, we'll come rejoin on you. Yeah, okay. You're gonna have to pull power. We're firewall. Copy. Well, you're a firewall. I'm not. Easy. We can get vortices on an RV or strong, I forgot. That big fat Hershey bar wing. Don't talk about your plane like that. <laughs> Alright, sliding under. Alright Tom, you take trail spacing underneath me.
So it's always interesting in the same flight to be uh, a lead and a wingman. Because as a lead, you're thinking of one thing, and as a wingman, you're thinking of something totally different. Right. So it's uh, transitioning between lead and uh, being wing is interesting. Especially when you're uh, number two of a multi-ship flight, then you have to think about the people to your side. And right. I mean, you just gotta trust them to be where they're supposed to be and everything. Uh, but still, it's uh, it's something else to think about. You know? Yeah. There's a lot of moving parts to this. There is, especially whenever you get into more airplanes. If it's just right. me and Tom, there's right. less talking, right? Like right now, it would just be flying back, totally normal, but since I'm now flying off miles, it's kind of a different uh, right. different experience, you know? Yeah. I think you might have re-sparked the love. I might have to uh, look into this career path. That's what I like <laughs> to hear. That's what I like to hear. That's kind of the point of why I really wanted an Eagle. You know, not only right. is it a beautiful airplane, and there's all my history and nostalgia with it and the legends that it has in air shows. Yeah. I mean, the Eagle has been, uh, Christian Eagle has been flying in air shows since uh, 1977. Wow. was the first year. And then there was a 10-year hiatus from 2014 until this year uh -huh. uh, of there not being an Eagle team. And now that we brought one back, uh, yeah. I don't plan on going anywhere anytime soon. So, uh, this airplane's really legendary in air shows and it's, be uh, it's beautiful, it's fun to fly, all that. Yeah. Uh, but being able to share it with people is one of my favorite parts. And hearing you say that this respark, <laughs> you know, your aerobatic yeah. interest, uh, means that this airplane and me, are, 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 we're doing our jobs, you know? Hey, extended Eagle flight of threes over Eagle Mountain Lake. Uh, five miles to the west inbound. Gonna set up for one mile on this runway three to extravagant. All right, Hicks traffic, Eagle Flight of Threes, two miles to the southwest. Going to get set up on a one-mile vessel for a 32 Hicks. Hicks traffic, Eagle Flight of Threes, left base final. Uh, turn one mile into the overhead break for a 32 Hicks. Look at that, traffic on final thing. It bounced around today. I know. That makes jo Tom's job very tough. <laughs> right, I know. I'm watching how much he's just moving around over there. Very cool, though. I love just the coordination and, like, cool, the man. challenge to it, right? Oh, yeah. And break. Six traffic Eagle One left downwind or midfield left downwind three two full stop fix. All right, so on this airplane you cannot see forward uh, when you're on approach. So what we're going to do is we're going to be in a really deep lift, uh, and then I kick it. Clear three two. I kick the tail out afterwards. Okay. Right. Clear three two. RV, you're down. Yeah. And six traffic. Hicks traffic, Eagle 1, space to final 3 2, Hicks. Hicks traffic, Eagle 2, turn left, base 3 2, full stop, Hicks. Hicks traffic, system full marker with you left, uh, down 1, 3 2, Hicks. Hicks traffic, uh, Eagle 2, short final 3 2, full stop, Hicks. Traffic 35 Delta, 4 Northwest downwind, 32 full stop pick. Well, that was fun. Yeah, that's an interesting Six approach. Traffic, four, four, tangle, three, north, west, yeah, it's uh, very steep, very fast. Yeah. It still wasn't that uncomfortable, though. It was just very, very different. Right, and that's. Yeah. Uh, it's not been, like, uh, dangerous or quick, however. It's just how you need to land this airplane. Right. Okay. Awesome. Well, thanks again for yeah. taking me flying. Absolutely. Show off the eagles and, you know, get me back on the ground safe. Yeah, exactly. Number one priority, right? <laughs> I had a lot yeah. of fun. Yeah. I awesome. loved it. Good. I loved it. Glad to hear it. We had a lot of fun ourselves. It's always yeah. fun to get to share it with somebody. Absolutely. Especially, uh, you know, getting somebody that's in GA so much. Yeah. Kind of show this side of the world is pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah. So, um, if you want to, where can people find more? Yeah, so you can follow us uh, anywhere, the Next Gen Eagles, uh, Instagram, Facebook, the website, all that's there. And if you're at an air show, please come out and say hi okay. to us. We'll have hero cards, stickers, all that kind of stuff. We'd love to meet you guys, and we'll see you out on the air show circuit soon. Perfect. I'll link all that. And again, this upcoming weekend, Fort Worth at the uh, Naval Air Station. Yes, so. Um, and I hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks again for tuning in for another episode of Flying Doodles. Make sure to subscribe for more, leave us a comment and a like. And if you have an airplane that you want to take me flying in and show it off here, then send me an email to code at flyingdoodles.com. That's a wrap. <laughs>